Hello boys and girls, welcome back to our English lesson. I am your English teacher, Aynazik Islambiakova, and today we're also going to learn English through interesting exercises. Are you ready? Let's go! So, do you know how to use modal verbs to talk about permission and obligation and prohibition? Let's look at the example. We are going to watch a video and you have to listen very carefully. Hello! I have a booking under Cheeseman. Mr. L. Cheeseman? That's me. And you've booked seven nights in the Sir Leslie Suite, correct? Correct. Excellent. Could I check your passports, Mr. and Mrs. Cheeseman? Of course. By the way, I have a few questions. Certainly. We have friends visiting tomorrow. Can they use the facilities? They can, but they have to pay a small fee of $20. That's reasonable. Does the $20 include everything? Yes, they're allowed to use the swimming pool, the bar, the restaurant, and the casino. Are we allowed to gamble in this country? Yes, you can. It's allowed here. Cool. One more thing. They want to bring their dog. That's okay. They've got to pay for the dog, too. That should be fine. And the dog has to be lighter than 20 kilograms. Uh, he's a giant dog. I think he's too big. Okay, I'm sorry. He's not allowed to come. Oh, that's okay. Don't worry. Thanks for understanding. So, your passports? Lucas was asking receptionists about things that he could do and things that he couldn't do and things that he had to do in the hotel. In the hotel. If we look at the example with the man walking his dog could say he can take him to a dog park. And this is permission. And we also can say, he has to pick up poop. And this is the, an obligation. He is not allowed to take him on the bus. And this is prohibition. We often use verbs with modal meanings to talk about permission and obligation. We can use the modal verb can to ask for and give permission. For example, can I sit here? You can use my car if you like. Or can I make a suggestion? We also use could to ask for permission but not to give it. Could is more formal and polite than can. For example, can I ask you something? Could I interrupt? Could I borrow your pen for a moment, please? May is the most formal way to ask for and give permission. For example, may I see your passport, please? Customers may request a refund within a period of 30 days. These pages may be photocopied for classroom use. For prohibition, we use can't and mustn't to show that something is prohibited. It is not allowed. Can't. We use can't to talk about something that is against the rules particularly when we didn't make the rules. For example, what does the sign say? Oh, we can't park here. Or, you can't take photos in the museum. They are really strict about it. You can't take photos in the museum. They are really strict about it. Or, Sorry, we can't sell knives to under 18s. We use must not to talk about what is not permitted. It is common on public signs and notices informing people of rules and laws. For example, visitors must not park in the staff car park. Or baggage must not be left unattended or guests must not make noise after 10 p.m. Mustn't. We use mustn't particularly when the prohibition comes from the speaker. For example, 
parent to child. You mustn't say things like that to your sister. Or teacher to student. You mustn't be late to class. I mustn't let that happen again. Obligation. We use have to and must to express obligation. There is a slight difference between the way we use them. Have to shows us that the obligation comes from outside the speaker. For example, we have to wear a uniform when we are working in reception. Or student to teacher, when do we have to hand in our homework? Or L has to work tomorrow, so he can't come. We sometimes call this external obligation. Must. Must expresses a strong obligation or necessity. It often shows us that the obligation comes from the speaker or the authority that wrote the sentence. For example, I must phone my dad. It's his birthday today. Or when teacher says to student, you must hand in your homework on Tuesday or you will lose 10% of your mark. Or when sign on a plane, seat belts must be worn by all passengers. And note that we don't use must to express obligation in the past. We use have to instead. For example, I had to pay 89 pounds to renew my passport last week. And also, let's talk about no obligation. That is, don't have to. We use don't have to to show that there is no obligation. You can do something if you want to, but it's not compulsory. For example, you don't have to wear a tie in our office, but some people like to dress more formally. Or, you don't have to go to the bank to do a transfer. You can do it online. Or, you don't have to come with me. Honestly, I'll be fine. So, here you can see a table with the rules. Can is used when something is permitted. For example, you can carry the ball and can't is used when something isn't permitted. You can't roll the ball. And to make a positive sentence, we just have to use firstly I, you, he, she, we, they and then the modal verb can and verb work. Negative sentence I, you, he, she, we, they can't work. And to make a question, can I or you, he, she, we, they work? And to give a short answer, yes, I can or no, I can't. Here is the rules with have to and don't have to. We use have to if something is necessary. For example, we have to wear a uniform. And we use don't have to if it's not necessary to do something. For example, you don't have to bring the ball. And to make a positive sentence, we use I, you, we, they have to work. And he, she, it has to work. To make a negative sentence, I, you, we, they don't have to work, and he, she, it doesn't have to work. To make a question, do I have to work? Does he have to work? And to make a question, does she have to work? Or does he have to work? etc. And to give a short answer, yes, I do, yes, he does, no, I don't, no, he doesn't. Now, children, it's time to have a practice. We are going to do some interesting exercises all together. 
Let's go. Here, you have to complete the gaps with can, can't, have to, don't have to, or allow to. I'm going to give you some time for this task. Have you finished? Let's check and compare your answers. So the first one is You can borrow my bike if you want to, but take care of it. Smoking is allowed in the smoking area only. I don't have to be at the meeting, but I think I'll go anyway as it could be interesting. Parking is not allowed in front of the building. I can't go with you tomorrow evening. I've got a match. You don't have to leave a tip, but if you want to, you can. Good job. Let's move to the next task. Here you have to match the underlined parts of each sentence from A to D with the correct meaning from 1 to 4. I'm also going to give you some time. Time is up. Let's compare and check your answers. They can, so the first sentence, A. They can have a break between periods for 10 minutes. That is, it's okay for them to have a break between periods for 10 minutes. B. They can't use alcoholic drinks. It isn't okay for them to use alcoholic drinks. C. Players have to follow the rules. It is necessary for them to follow the rules. In the last one, they don't have to wear heavy clothing. It means it isn't necessary for them to wear heavy clothing. Great job! Read the rules for players, complete the gaps with can, can't, have to, or don't have to. For example, you can't break the rules of the game. I am also going to give you some time for this task. Have you finished? 
Let's check your answers all together. You have to respect the judgment of referees. You have to play fair. You can give your autograph to your fans after the game. And the last one, you have to celebrate your victory if you win. So here we are going to have a little test and you have to choose the correct option to complete the given sentences. Have you finished? Let's check your answers. You mustn't speak on the mobile phone on an airplane. Let's do the next one. You mustn't take photos in this museum. Let's do the next one. I can listen to the music I like. My parents like it too. And the next one. I have to do my homework. We mustn't eat sweets in the classrooms. Good job! We must be quiet. Let's do the next one. You mustn't make noise in this area. You must put the rubbish into the bin. And let's do the last one. I can't watch TV late at night. My parents say I must go to bed early. And now, children, let's quickly review. So first, let's look at the phrase we can use for permission. And the first one is can. And we can use the formula subject plus can plus verb. And let's look at the image of driving license. We can say, he can drive a car. He has the permission and he's got a driving license. Then we have a parking permit. And our other formula for permission is subject plus be allowed to plus verb. So we can say he is allowed to park here. Let's look at our obligation phrases. And the first formula we have is subject plus have has got to plus verb. And let's look at the picture. Here we have two people and a ticket booth. So they've got to buy tickets. We have a subject, they. So we need to have rather than has. They've got to buy tickets. It's an obligation. Another one is subject plus have has to plus verb. And in the next image, we have someone with crutches. It looks like he have a broken leg 
or a broken foot and she has to use crutches. And finally, we have a prohibition. So one formula we can use for prohibition is subject plus can't plus verb. So in this image, we have someone in prison and there are lots of things prisoners can't do. For example, he can't leave his cell. He is prohibited. That is, he is not allowed and can't leave his cell. Another example is exactly not allowed to. In the formula is subject plus be not allowed to plus verb. And here we have a sign, someone diving into a swimming pool. But the sign says, you can't do it. So the full sentence is, you are not allowed to dive. Good job. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.